Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor David, welcome. How are you doing, John? Good. You know, Pastor, the school year is just to begin, and a lot of children are going back to school. And some are faced with the decision or the, the choice of public school or homeschool. And you look at our public schools today, and I want to give a shout out to all the teachers that are there, that are Christians, that are in the front lines battling and trying to provide a good education for the children. So I want to thank them for that. Yet uh, we see what the public schools are pushing today. Gender dysphoria, pronoun choices, uh, more, more rights are given to the children and parental rights are taken away. The curriculum that's being taught that's including homosexuality, everything that we stand against as Christians, these public schools are providing. Then you have the option of homeschool, which uh, like here at our church, we have a Christian homeschool program and, and where the curriculum is uh, is a biblical worldview. So you see these options and uh, you know, you're a parent yourself, I'm a parent. What would be, what, what are some of the things that you would think about in choosing either a public school or a home school? I program? think a lot has, a, there's a lot that goes into that decision. When, when my son David was uh, a little boy about to go into elementary school, we're talking many years ago now, the, the homeschool movement was not really uh, established. It was just beginning to some degree at that time. I mean, at that time, parents were being uh, cited for not attending, having the children attend school. It was very difficult, um, and uh, it created a lot of a lot of problems. So, we as as concerned parents also taken into consideration the emotional maturity of my son at the age that he would have entered into kindergarten made the choice to keep him back at least that one year and to make the effort to um, begin his education under under Marie, my wife, who was, um, you know, she's got her bachelor's degree and uh, we felt that she could do a good job at least for uh, acclimating him towards the idea of academic rigors and things of that nature. And so on the one hand, I think it's uh, always going to be really up to the parents. I, I do believe that parents should have the right to make determination concerning the things that their children are about to be influenced by and uh, the kinds of um, things that they're going to be taught. So we were aware even of that, even at that time of um, the difficulties that the, our kids would find uh, by going to secular school. Um, we know and knew then, as we see now, it's even more clear now, that the um, secular ideology um, is, is rapidly um, inculcating the way that the young think. And parents, unfortunately, for whatever reason, have a tendency of believing what is spoken of as being the, um, the um, educated um, thoughtfulness of those who are determining what kinds of uh, lessons and what kinds of philosophy and worldview should be given to the children. But we know that if you take a child, if you, you can steal a, uh, an entire nation by stealing a generation mm -hmm. of children. And we've known that for a long time. I used to warn our church and speak to our church about that. You need to be giving your kids devotions. You need to be spending time with them because if you don't teach them who Jesus is, the world is going to teach them who he is not. And that is what has taken place. And so what we're seeing right now, I think, is just the, not so much an acceleration, John. I think it's just that the, that the seeds that have been planted have, have grown and are producing fruit. And many people are very surprised at it because they, they think that they were taken unaware and have failed to realize that the society that they may have grown up in is not the society their children is growing up in. All you need to do is look at the different things that the kids watch, whether it's uh, even cartoons, whether it's the music that they're, they're listening to, or the movies that are being put out, the subtle, subtle things that you have in, in even harmless and maybe even a bit odd uh, movies, uh, you know, like Barbie and this and that, you know. <laughs> there, are all mess there are messages in that. Disney has, has produced now so many different narratives of the of the old stories and have changed it to try and modernize it. So this is what they're dealing with. So getting back to the question, should 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 a child go to 
secular school. It depends on the school. It depends on, on the school district. It depends on the parents and, and what their determination in terms of involvement may be. But so many um, two, uh, you know, two, so many families that are a single parent. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for for uh, we'll say the mom who's normally the one who's raising the child to be able to not only work to provide but also to be able to take the hours that is required for that child to be uh, taught. And so as a result, you know, we've seen the fragmentation and all, and it becomes a very difficult decision to make. How can a, a single working mother actually homeschool? So she has to make the best choice right. she can. I thank, I thank God for school districts like the one we have here, the Chino Unified, with uh, Sonia Shaw and others who are willing to stand up and say, you're not going to brainwash our children. You're not going to own their minds. You're not going to give them corrupt ideologies, ideologies. Uh, we're going to uh, fight against this gen, uh, this gender dysphoria, this, this, uh, this current that has taken away the rights of the parents. We're going to fight against them. And so I commend Sonia mm -hmm. Shaw and the others who have stood up in opposition. But it's strong and it doesn't stop. And that's where I think people fail to realize this isn't a one-round fight. This is, this is a continual fight. And so when it comes down to it, many parents in our church has made, have made a determination that they would take it upon themselves to make sure that their children are given a, a proper uh, focused education so that they learn how to read and to write and uh, do mathematics and social studies and things like that without the corrupt influence mm -hmm. of those who, who want to say a boy can be a girl and a girl can be a boy. They need the traditional upbringing to know what traditional roles are so that they can have families that actually last. And so it's a hard decision. We here have made the decision to encourage people to, if they desire, to, to participate in homeschooling. But should they decide not to, which the majority decide not to, may they go to schools that are either private institutions or uh, you know, may the parents be heavily involved in, the, in their uh, curricula of their children so that they can help those children to not be brainwashed with the nonsense of this world. Amen. And if people have, who are watching may have questions about homeschool, we do offer a homeschool here at our church. You can call the church office and get more information on that. But yeah, it's a tough choice, especially in a single parent family oh, and, and they're trying their best. Um, but yet we see what's out there and, and, the, and the corruption. Amen. And Amen. so, uh, but thank you, Pastor David. We appreciate that. Thank you guys for tuning in. Do want to invite you to our Sunday morning Services at 8.30 and 10.45. As pastor, you'll be taking us through Acts... Chapter 9. Chapter, oh, that was a good study last Continue. week. Continue. Well, yeah, that's because you just constantly <laughs> say that. You want to keep your job. <laughs> I might get fired, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so invite your friends and family to come out and join us, and uh, we'd love to see you. Again, thank you for tuning in, and God bless you.